Among the undressed, after Hortense Spillers, by Claudia Rankin. Stepping into the painting, backing up a moment to its edge, any further we fall out of the picture, we encounter her, black woman, be she enslaved or what. Of all the women here, she alone dressed in white and orange stripes, partially draped in full consciousness of her object, the chaste goddess, yet and always still naked in the structures of thought that fix us. We see her clothing the chaste goddess, or since we might as well embrace the goddess's outsized mythic powers, I would go so far as to say we see her shielding the metaphorically winged goddess, who, despite her proximate fleshy positioning, dominates in the crash between gods and mortals. We see her, be she enslaved or what, her dress slipping, rushed into service, her gaze caught by Acteon, who stands before her caught in the myth, oh dear, dear Acteon. You have stumbled into that which you creating, created, your pillaging glance. You have stumbled into, well, we must be careful here, not to understate the violence you are, white and male. You have stumbled into the painted poem, lit from the left. Try to see yourself. Throw your reflection back through the impoverishment of history. Under these circumstances, given our circumstances, Acteon, whatever you might think of your coming state, your bullish metamorphosis stag, does not destroy your authority, your potential power to come furiously. It is, after all, your dogs who ultimately destroy you. Whether we are addressing you, Acteon, or not, the goddess knows. She knows. And as clearly as anyone before or since, the black woman, be she enslaved or what, sees. She sees, has seen, has learned, has lived our collective history of being raped, whether we are approached by you, Acteon, or not. Between the goddess and her nymphs bathing in the sacred grotto lives the premise of chastity, even as the nymphs flirt in their eloquent poses. I do not doubt that we must have refinement, or is it confinement in the picture at the same time, that we recognize that history, that history has made peace with. This classical representation, the displacement of a vagina by a face, remains living as far as we, the black woman, be she enslaved or what, can see. And is it that only one face reflects back to us what a human being is not? In x-rays of the painting, Layers of light reveal the black woman, be she enslaved or what, naked or otherwise, is not original to the picture, but rather arrived as a substitute shade onto the body of a white woman in an effort, perhaps, to normalize unthinkable acts, unspeakable practices. Why is the dog there at the feet of the black woman? Be she enslaved or what? Oh, Titian, Titian. The women cannot truly merge, not even here, in your depiction of the moment of passage between the human and the non-human world. 
I don't wish to be unfair. I am interested primarily in, in, in life, living, barely registered, rarely measured, regarding the black woman, be she enslaved or what, be she x-rayed or not. I believe that you who see understand what I am describing as certain dynamics are by no means limited to Titian's 16th century rendering. I do not think I exaggerate the living conditions out of which our being becomes our seeing. All this nakedness stuns in its ritual re repetition of loss, loss of control over beauty, our bodies, all this nakedness under these conditions of seeing the fact that the black woman, be I enslaved or what appears dressed, undresses me. The fact that Titian addresses me does not redress me. The painting draws from what violence Titian allowed himself to see, thus fating us all to be seen seeing. See? It is no use trying to erase the violence in the painting. No use trying to disprove it is what it is. It is. But I give you this. Given the violence insulates itself quite differently, depending on who, who sees, go and say what you have seen, if you can. <laughs>